Um, so, for those who don't know, so uh, my name is Chris Newell, um, CEO of Impulse Pay. Um, what I thought I'd cover today is just really about kind of what's happening about Pay for It in general. And I think everybody here is kind of familiar you know, with Pay for It. It's you know part of the kind of charge for mobile direct billing kind of marketplace on that. Um, so a little bit about sort of Impulse Pay. So uh, we're sort of directly connected on all the UK mobile networks. Uh, we're very much kind of focused on the sort of charge mobile opportunities out there. So we sort of like the kind of technology behind pay for it. And what we're trying to do is find ways to make that better for more kind of mainstream sort of out there. And a bit like what James was saying earlier on, actually, that we're not so interested in trying to like take from someone else and mess things around and stuff like that, but actually look at those new opportunities out there using things you know, that we can do today to see how we can bring new services you know, to the you know, PRS sort of industry on that. And really, that's the way we work. You know, we, we sort of look for innovative services. We look for how we can do those, and we can work with channel partners, and we try to... You know, we know our kind of place is that kind of point of conversion, so we try to be the best at that, and then you know, allow the other people that we work with to do, you know, be the best at what they kind of do on that. So um, just to sort of go back a little bit in time, so 2009 was really where we got into pay for it. Uh, and back then, it's sort of a slightly different world, so everyone was convinced, and you know, there's a you know, session like this in Malta, maybe, where we were. Yeah, somewhere like that. And we're, we're all convinced that pay for it is about to be dropped, and you know, that's the end of the world for pay for it, and you know, the networks will just yeah. sort of give up and move on on that. Um, and it's, you know, I think it's done pretty well since then. Uh, you know, it's had its ups and downs along the way, but overall, it's every year it's improving and increasing and getting better and better. You know, 2012 was really that uh, you know the kind of rebirth of pay for it. So, I think during that time, there was a really good attention was put onto the actual kind of user experience. So, yes, we know how to say too many words to make sure the consumer knows exactly what they're doing, but we actually sort of started learning then that you know if you say too much, the consumer give up, and actually sometimes you know there's better ways of doing things on that. Uh, 2013, the Pay For It Management Group you know, was established, and I think you know, this is you know, a major asset to the UK industry. You know, this is a group of all the networks that meet every month. Uh, you know, they have you know, conference calls in between that as well. And as a merchant, you, know, you can come straight into that group with your you know, API. You can present your kind of concept of what you want to do. You know, it might just be that you want to make a green button blue. You might want to completely change something and come up with something so new and innovative that it kind of just blow everyone away. But the previous way of doing it, you had to go around each network individually to get that sign off. And you know, since 2013, we've had this asset in the UK where we can just go to this meeting, we can get an hour to you know, explain it, we can have follow-up meetings. And the emphasis really is, you know, how do we approve it? It's not, we don't like this idea, so how do we kill it so it doesn't come back? It's like, you know, we like this, you know, change that, change that, come back again, and it's OK. Uh, and you know, we've been kind of doing that process. And, I think you know, if we look at pay for it generally, you know, it's a 30 million a year industry. You know, if it's going to grow to 150 million a year, more than that even, um, it needs the kind of processes and procedures established. And the good thing is that they are now established in the UK, and that is you know, a catalyst for the kind of growth on that. From a mobile perspective, um, you know, Vodafone has a renewed focus in this area, and I think you know, they, they've done tremendous work this year. Uh, you know, with what they've been doing there, and you know, a lot of it behind the scenes, it doesn't necessarily become apparent to people. But as time goes on, you know, that will come out, and you know, that's a you know, great sort of boost on that. Um, O2 has been investing heavily for two, you know, over two years. They built a whole new charge to mobile platform. They've rolled that out, and it's a you know, it's a great platform. You know, within that, uh, EE, uh, you know, they're launching their new platform in November, so that's going to bring uh, dynamic billing. So this is you know, penny price points. You know, from five pence to thirty pound. When EE do this, that means that we can build you know seventeen ninety nine on all networks now, which is you know you know fantastic place to be in, and you know there's something we've been pushing you know for years there. Uh, even free, you know that they're kind of starting to reward. Um, you know they've sort of released new rates that are very much target driven. So there's been a bit of pushback that the low bands were a bit too low, but you know the high bands are actually you know pretty good. It takes a bit of time to get there, unfortunately, but. You know, each network is doing its bit in its own way. It, you know, they can never work all together, you know, effectively. But I think you know they are pushing you know forwards you know with that. Um, oops. And you know, one of the things you know sort of discussed slightly you know before there. So on the um, you know the commercial development there. So we launched Impulse Pay launched Bill Mobile uh, earlier on this year. So this is focused on five pound to thirty pound um, you know price points. 
Uh, no adult, no competition, sort of no kind of high risk services. Doesn't offer, doesn't work on Virgin, Tesco's, GiftGap, O2 business, which is about 5% of the market is not really worth doing it. But what that said, for new people, you know, outside of here, so, uh, you know, the other train company that aren't using us or the, you know, people that are going to credit card as their primary way of doing it, here's actually a mobile billing solution that is better, you know, than, than you know, than what you previously sought was there. And it's at a price point that the finance guy can look at it and say, well, it's not going to cannibalize my business if it doesn't work. It's within a territory that I'm comfortable with working with. So from that, it just becomes a numbers game of how many people can we hit every month to keep pushing and pushing to do it. And you know, it's been doing very well since then. It takes all mobile payments. Those kind of companies with all, all mobile payments takes time for them to go live and you know, get established. Uh, but you know, we are starting to see more company going and each, you know, each month you're building, you know, building and building on that there. Even um, so, one of the kind of, sort of big things to pay for has been enhancing your click, and you know that was you know I was sat here three years ago, two and a half years, three years ago, you know talking about that, and I think the thing to remember is that any technology has an evolution curve, and whilst it you know it served its purpose, it was good for a while, and you know it's evolving, you know from that, um, I think we're actually at a crossroad point where in three months' time it becomes irrelevant. You know, the, with the PMG, you know the, the new concept coming out to the market. Um, you know, that we've made it so easy for people to launch stuff, you know, people come up with their own ideas, and, you know, this is an idea that's three years old, there's better things than that out now. Um, so, while that has been one of the big things, I'd be quite disappointed if I'm here next year and people are still talking about it, I'd like to think that we're actually moving on past that now, and we're sort of moving into new territory with new ideas and new stuff on that, but, yeah, there's no point just dropping what we have today, just because of something new, we have to keep evolving and keep sort of going with the, you know, going with the times on that one, really. Um, and so just, you know, sort of touching on the payment management group. So, um, you know, we've, just from our sort of experience, so we've, we've kind of launched uh, five new kind of concepts through that. And I think really one, one of the areas that, you know, that sort of a bit of work going on at the moment is trying to speed up that process. So start to finish, you know, you're probably talking a two or three month kind of process of getting a new service live. And I think, you know, really what we should be looking for is a two or three week process of getting the you know, services live. But... The situation we're in now is that that is you know, one of the only discussions we need to have with the networks. We don't need to do all these other things about you know, dynamic billing or better payouts. You know, we're just basically asking them, how can we do what we want to do quicker? And you know, we'll find a solution to that you know, in, in due course on that one there. So I think you know, the, the big thing that's sort of coming out, you know, or you know, that we're going to sort of start getting sort of involved with really is you know, pay for it five. Uh, pay for it four was launched uh, two and a bit years ago. Um, yeah, we're now due the next kind of up, you know, update to that. We've had 4.1 in the meantime, but really I think it's a major you know, revision is now due to it. Um, AIM, which I think Rory is somewhere yeah, they, yeah, there. So AIM are leading the way. So um, you know, it, usually these things so start off from the AIM kind of working groups. We get various people, you know, the various kind of stakeholders, the L1s, the major L2s around the table, we kind of discuss, you know, what we need to be looking at. Um, yeah, and then from that, those kind of ideas are then formulated into the networks, you know, from that. I would say that Pay it 5 is probably unlikely to include things like adult services and competition services because they're quite well addressed within Pay for it 4. But, you know, there's so many other areas to it that we're not addressing at all that, you know, really Pay for it 5 should be looking at those. Uh, so the kind of plug for AIM here is, you know, if you want to be involved in that, then join AIM and we'll be sitting at the back. But you're probably aware of that already. Um, one of the things I'd like to see, you know, from it really is kind of evolving, you know, the screens of pay for it. So really, you know, what we should be looking at, you know, is how do we take the kind of designs out of the rules? Because you know, it doesn't really matter what colour the background is, what colour the header boxes are, you know, where the pricing is in you know proportion to the, you know, the operator logos or something like that. All things that we've had yellow cards for in the past, I think. As well there, but really, you know, what we rules should be looking at is things like you know transaction, secu you know, transaction security. So, when we send the MT method, when we send the user a PIN code, you know, how long is that PIN code valid for? How many attempts do they get to retry it? You know, what is the you know what is the information on the PIN code? Outside of that, the design should be up to the L2. You know, it needs to be done on the L1 platform, but it should be the L2 that can stipulate that you know they want to have a nice branded you know site that works really well for them. Yeah, the L2, L1 can figure out how to build it. 
And then you, know, you kind of monitor that from the background. So then you say, well, if these services are getting too many calls, then you need to look at it. If it's within an acceptable boundary, then it's, it's OK. And I think you know, when you combine that with low-risk services, that creates an opportunity that you know, is, is great to you know, sort of be working towards there. And having just come from two PSD2 and FCA presentations, you know, the big thing, next big thing is getting physical as well there. So I think the two alternative approaches, um, so the FCA, uh, you know, the e-money license route, which James can talk much more about that than I can, you know, PhonePay Plus and the PSD2 kind of route there. And I think, you know, we are likely to see transactions limited. You know, we've got bad debt, you know, in the back of the mind there. We've got, you know, things, you know, about going too high in a price point there. So up to a sort of 30 euro or 30 pound territory, we're probably, you know, probably pretty good there. But the big thing here is, you know, same before, it, it doesn't need one or the other to, you know, to win this market. What we need is just any of them out there. And all of that is increasing the marketplace. And I mean, yeah, that, that creates a, you know, should be a billion, you know, multi-billion pound marketplace. Uh, there's going to be an interesting battle or debate or, you know, face off between phone, uh, the FCA and phone pay plus and, It'd be nice to sort of sit on the sidelines for that one, you know, for once there and, and see where, where that one goes. I think, you know, from all of this, you know, pay for it to me is in a pretty good position and it's got a lot of, you know, it's going to take time to work through and it's got a lot of potential there, but it's definitely worth getting involved and doing more on it. But I think we also have to be mindful of actually, you know, kind of where can it all, you know, go wrong. And to me, it's a broken customer service. So... These are, you know, sort of typical excuses that we see. You know, people just outright deny that they ever use the site, and they say, you know, I've never made that purchase. Um, sometimes, you know, the person complaining is not the bill payer. So, the, you know, the child used the parent, you know, the example before that, you know, you know, the daughter went off and you know deliberately ran up a big bill just to annoy her mother. On that, there's nothing that we can really do about those. Or, you know, from the affiliate marketing sort of stuff this afternoon, um, you know, the website might say it's free or it's been misleading, and you know, they come to the point of purchase and not quite what they. Sort it out. And then what tends to happen, that then gets compounded it goes into call centres. And, you know, operated call centres are a huge environment. You know, you've got thousands of people, you know, very high kind of churn. Um, you know, there's not really much you can do about it. You can try to educate them, but, you know, it's just constantly, you know, moving to keep up, you know, running to keep up on that one. Um, and what you then see is, you know, sort of the excuses change slightly. So lack of training results in people saying, like, all payments are a scam. Uh, you know, just completely useless advice is given out sometimes. It said, you know, it goes file a small claims court action, and we all complain about phone pay plus, and you know they're not even telling them to go to phone pay plus there. Uh, and I think actually probably the worst case scenario is the operator, you know, the call centre person, you know, maybe they're just at the end of their shift and they want to go home, so they just say, right, we'll just refund you, and you know, complete disregard to the fact that the merchant can prove the transaction took place and they're perfectly entitled to charge, and they just you know whack it on, you know, refund you, and it's a charge back at the end of the month. On that. And those are kind of the issues, I think, that if we don't really try to, you know, sort of address those, they're, you know, they're, they're only kind of going to get sort of kind of worse, you know, really for us. And, you know, the internet, you know, that should be the answer, uh, really, but, you know, possibly it's not at the moment. Um, there's definitely a big drive by the network to get all the information onto the bill. So I think, you know, by going into quarter one next year for, you know, direct bill or, you know, charge mobile stuff, each network will have the telephone or helpline number printed on the bill. You know, so there should be no reason why the consumer can't get in touch with the merchant. What's happening is that fewer consumers are looking at their bill. So we've kind of solved one problem, we have a new problem you know, to deal with. It's dead on that. So what then happens, you know, we found is that consumers then go to online forums. And these are kind of moderated by people that are not connected to the, you know, the mobile companies, they're not connected to the industry. Uh, you know, they, you know, put themselves across as experts at what they do, but then in reality they've had no training in PRS services and you know, have no real idea about the support network that goes in you know, behind it. And to me, you know, this is a problem that doesn't scale up. And you know, we can put it off and say, you know, it's not our problem as an industry to deal with, it's the network's problem. You know, the networks have a remit to do customer care, but that's a call centre, it's not really the online kind of world. Or you know, we find a way to work together to, to try to address this problem. Um, but I think you know, the, the underlying issue here that if we kind of keep putting it off, it doesn't actually solve the problem and it just comes back further down the line that we need to be looking at fixing it. And last sort of, uh, last slide, but one really, though, you know, the M&Os are adopting their own approach and this is possibly a sign of how bad things could be if we just sort of leave them, you know, to it. Um, an unnamed network now, uh, you know, does 
kind of random customer care surveys uh, you know, after a transaction. And typically, you know, you're talking two to six weeks after a transaction takes place, you get a text message asking you what you thought of that transaction, you know, rate it on a scale of one to ten. And um, just playing devil's advocate here, so the top two there, ten out of ten, were adult services. So, you know, contrary to belief, you know, some people do rate adult services quite highly, and, you know, shock to us as well there. Um, you know, the one out of ten, so spare room, you know, somebody replied back saying they have no idea what's going to appear on their phone bill and no knowledge of having purchased anything, you know, on their mobile phone ever. And they rated it one out of ten. Uh, and then Virgin Train, you know, which is a, usually a good example of someone, you know, that you can't accidentally buy that and not realise or can't have a problem with that kind of service. You know, threatening to go to a small claims court because, you know, something unrelated to transaction was causing them a problem. But what happened is that customer care score is then linked to their internal customer satisfaction targets, uh, which then means you've got senior people in the network running around going, you know, this mobile billing causing a problem on that. And I think as an industry, you know, that's one of the areas that we need to be addressing. Now that we're getting all these other areas sorted out, we need to really be addressing the, you know, the customer service problem there. So in summary, you know, um, pay for it continuing to evolve, and I think it's keeping pace. It, you know, it's not designed to go out there and be, you know, be everything for anyone, but you know, it's improved massively over the years. The commercial proposition, which is a big improvement for this year, is great, and that's, you know, that's only going to open up more uh, opportunities out there. You know, the um, kind of physical goods, quasi-physical goods marketplace opening up, uh, so that kind of give, you know, a big expansion. But probably a takeaway point from this, it, you know, if there's a bad customer service happening, then that's going to hinder all of this. So, you know, collectively, we should be working together to try to fix those issues before it becomes a big, you know, big problem in the future there. And if you want to get in touch, those are my details, or talk to Rory about joining AIM as well then.